Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Kuba Kukarski. Uh, I'm a chief product engineering at Golem, and I'm here with VTech, a software engineering from Golem. Uh, and we're going to talk briefly about what is Golem, how Golem works, and then uh, VTech will show a, a cool application that we've built on top of new Golem uh, that is actually a bit of a modification of the of the uh, zk sync operator which is like a core concept of the of the one of the layer twos for for ethereum that is using golem as a backend and how we created this poc and how it works and so you can see cool things that can be built with golem uh yeah but starting with golem and uh what exactly it is uh first it's a community community of developers community of users community of token holders we are a, a very old project in terms of crypto uh i think we're dating back to 2014 and ico in 2016 and we have been developing golem since then uh, and what we're talking about today is like the a uh, major refactor of the whole Golem concept. And uh, so, yeah, first thing, Golem is a community. Second, uh, it is a decentralized protocol. It's a, it's a marketplace for any kind of uh, computing resources. And obviously, because it's a decentralized protocol, it's also a network of nodes. Uh, and the implementation of Golem protocol is called Yagna. You will see this name probably a lot in this presentation. Uh, so yeah, Golem uh, is in a way uh, a network of, of Yagna nodes servers. And of course, agents that are talking to these nodes uh, to either request or, or provide computing resources. Uh, okay, so uh, why would you use like Golem versus the, the rest of the, tools out there for building application. There's a lot of tools. There's a lot of like centralized tools. There's a, you know, the whole cloud infrastructure there that you could be using. But Golem, you can use without uh, registering. You don't have to register to use Golem to deploy your application on top of Golem. You don't need to provide a credit card to do it. And it is like a censorship resistant decentralized network It is in its core. And uh, moreover, uh, decentralization is, is not all of it. The, the, the first thing that we're focusing on is the shallow learning curve. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to start creating these applications on top of Golem. And on top of it, uh, it is much cheaper than uh, most of the blockchain execution environment. So Golem is is not a block not not a blockchain actually. Uh, Golem is uh, is actually a tool that you're using uh, completely uh, off chain. Uh, but the the part that is executing uh, on blockchain uh, is the payments part. So the payments for these activities are happening happening on uh, on Ethereum blockchain right now. But yes, it's 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 much cheaper than Ethereum to to execute some computations, obviously, and it's much cheaper than than other than other platforms. Um, okay, so you can see now like a very basic diagram of of how this looks. So there is a network of nodes that we've been talking about, and this is the part that we have in the middle, and we have two important entities. And one is the requester, and, and the second one is provider. So provider is uh, someone who wants to provide their computing resources to the network. And the requester is someone that needs this computational or other computing resources power. And uh, so the, the requester is just a program, like just a set of instruction on what should be executed on the, on the provider side. Uh, the, 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 the weird frame here with the HL API is a high level API. So yes, we have on top of our REST API, we have a high level API to, uh, to integrate with Golem network. Um, okay. So 
important things. You don't need any low level programming experience. Actually, uh, to, to write application on top of Golem, uh, you can use any programming language or, or any binary because, uh, again, we have REST API or you could be using high level APIs in Python or JavaScript to, to write a set of instructions, but the actual code of your application could be anything, anything that, that fits in a, uh, in a Docker image. And uh, as I mentioned, you don't need blockchain programming skills uh, because uh, Golem is not built on top of blockchain per se. Uh, again, blockchain is, uh, is the part that we're using for payments, but uh, any other use case that you can think about that, that, that requires sharing or, or requesting uh, computing resources can be built on top of Golem. And also you don't need a lot of time. Actually, uh, we've checked this and it takes around 15 minutes to, to, to get your application up and running on, on top of Golem Network. So it's, it's very fast to, to start with. Uh, so what do you need to, to start an application? You will need a Yagna node. So you will need to uh, download the package with Yagna or, or compile Yagna from sources and, and run it on your computer. And then just writing this, this, this I, I would say that that's a simplification, but set of instruction for, uh, for the providers or go on, on Golem network. And yeah, you just run it and it works. Uh, well, there is some more details to it. Uh, so when you're requesting, uh, you actually need two things. First is this instructions on, on what to do it and how to do it. And these are instructions like, okay, so uh, this is my data that I want on this provider. This is my code that I want to run on this provider. This is the data that I'm providing. This is the re results that I'm fetching. This is this, this kind of instructions that, that you need to, to implement to kind of tell the, the providers in the network on what to do. But also, like if your if your application needs some special environment, some libraries, you have to build an image and upload it to the Golem network. And this image has to be capable of of executing your code or executing your binary, and it will be executing in the in the very very safe environment of the of the provider. And we call this uh, uh, exe units, execution environments. Uh, so when it comes to instructions, you can do it using our high level APIs. So it's a very, uh, easy to use set of, uh, functions, uh, that you can use in, in Python or, or JavaScript and the image, if you want to create it, uh, you actually create a Docker file. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. If something works, uh, as a Docker image, it will work on a on a Golem network. It's just enough to convert this Docker image using our tool to the to the image that is uh, compatible with the with the Golem network, and that's it. And and you have the image. So if you have like a code that executes in some certain image, that probably you can run it on top of Golem network. So this means uh, your options are almost unlimited. So. There are still some limitations that we have introduced for, for several reasons. Uh, for example, for now, uh, your, your, your code and your image have to be like self-sustaining and, and they don't have any hack access to, to the network. So you will have to do this round trips with, with sending data and fetching results uh, to your requester. So for example, you cannot write a HTTP server on top of Golem yet. Uh, and there are some minor limitations when it comes to the time of the execution and the size of the image and the size of the data, obviously. But basically, anything that you can run on, on Docker uh, can run on, uh, on Golem. Uh, what else? Uh, the most important resource for you is handbook.golem.network. Uh, if you go there, we have like a quick primer tutorial. Uh, I mentioned you can start within a 15 minutes. This is true. Just head to Handbook Golem Network and, and look for our quick start tutorial uh, and you'll be able to start. Also, like, don't forget to 
attend our workshops on Wednesday uh, and Kuba Mazurek there will be showing you how actually to, to create a simple application on, on top of Golem. But now uh, we want to show you something super cool, something that Vitek that is with me here uh, created. And as I mentioned, it is, it is a way to, uh, to use ZK Sync operator, but, uh, but using the, the Golem as a backend for, for the zero knowledge proofs. Uh, so super cool. Uh, Vitek, I'm, I'm handing over to you. Thank you. So now when you already know the basic stuff about Golem, let's see how it works and what can we build on top of that. I'm going to show you a live demo of experimental application uh, that runs ZK Sync Prover uh, with new Golem as a backend. So keep finger crossed. My name is Vitor Jincho and I'm core developer of New Golem. First things which we need to talk is how ZK Sync works and how Golem fits in this image, how can we connect ZK Sync with Golem? So uh, ZK Sync is layer two solution that solves problem or the problems of Ethereum network. And that is that it increases number of transaction uh, on Ethereum blockchain and lowers transaction fees. And to reach this goal, uh, ZK Sync uses zero knowledge proofs. The main idea is something like this, instead of Valid, uh, verifying every each transaction separately, we can collect them all into blocks and we can send to a single computer that can generate the knowledge proof uh, for this block. So this, is, this block can be verified then on Ethereum as whole instead of verifying each transaction. So this is the solution that um, increases this number of transactions. And zero knowledge proofs has very interesting characteristic because it is very easy to verify this proof. But on the other hand, it is very hard to generate such a proof. And this is actually the, the best place for Golem because zero knowledge proofs require this computing power and Golem is giving this computing power. Now, I will, uh, before I will go to the application itself, I will start, start with uh, showing you an uh, overview of the casing. So this is a uh, uh, casing architecture uh, without a golem yet. So there is there are two parts actually. There's the casing server. The server is responsible for collecting transactions and it uh, builds blocks. Then we have the second part, which are ZK Sync provers. And these provers are responsible for, for generating uh, um, zero knowledge proofs for these blocks. And they get these blocks from server and then return proofs for it. So how can we just translate this into Golem? We can do something like this. So we have this lightweight part that is uh, the server, and we we have this computationally heavy part, which are these provers. So what we would like to do is we would like to send provers and run them on Golem providers, and we can leave server as as it is now. Mm. So this is the overview of this solution. We have Yagna requester that works as proxy between server and uh, Golem network. Uh, it pretends to be a prover and it talks to the casing server and requests blocks and returns the proofs. And it forwards these blocks uh, into Golem network and uh, they are computed on Golem providers. It is very easy to uh, run something on, on provider because it is enough to create Docker image with prover uh, we have nice tools for converting um, Docker images into our virtual image format. Uh, so the only difficulty here was that we don't support network networking from inside of a virtual image to outside world. So uh, I had to replace the networking layer 
uh, that it so it can be able to talk with this requester. Besides this, uh, you, you, running Prover on on, uh, on the Golem network is just like uh, building Docker image and sending tasks. So this is this overview. And now while we switch to uh, the application, Uh, so I can, uh, I'm not able to share my screen yet. Um, okay. Uh, first thing, I will yard, run Yagna Demon. Yagna Demon is uh, entry point to Golem network. So this is uh, applic uh, this is the one to which requester will connect to and will talk to providers thanks to this. Next, I need to run ZKSync server. Uh, I'm running ZKSync server locally. So I'm not using RinkB, I have local get in Docker container. I run ZKSync server and as you see, nothing is happening at this moment because there are no transactions and uh, Blocks are generated when there are no, no transactions. And now I will, uh, I will run a requester, which is this proxy between uh, between ZKSync server and between Golem providers. Let's see what happened here. We registered ourselves as prover of ZKSync server. We can check this on uh, another type of server. Let's see what happened here. As, as you see, as you can see, we have Yagna node one, which is this request or it is registered as prover. Next, what happened? We cre created agreement with uh, a strangely named provider, uh, which will compute tasks for us. And then uh, this application is uh, trying to request blocks, but nothing is happening because there are no blocks in uh, ready to compute, so it's waiting. Uh, at this moment, I'm going to uh, send uh, sample transaction to the network. I'm using uh, zkSync CLI, which is uh, part of the zkSync repository, so we, I can, let's say, mock it transactions, sending transactions. I'll send one transaction and uh, I will try to wait for this transaction. So um, this command that I'm pasting here will return when a proof uh, for the block will be generated and will be verified on, on Ethereum. Now we can check what happened to the casing server uh, after uh, after sending this transaction? As you see here, the block was created, uh, number 60. Um, here happened something else because server is uh, is uh, sending this block, is committing this block to Ethereum blockchain, but yet it uh, is committing it without uh, verification yet, so without proof. And as you see, this block was sent to my Yagna node one, which is my requestor. Now we can see what happened on the requestor side. We got the block 60, it's the same that, that was there. And now we are computing uh, this block on the provider. So blocks, uh, blocks prover data was, uh, was sent uh, to the provider, which we had uh, already agreement with, and now it's generating this proof. Uh, as you can see, um, this process is, I would say, relatively long, so it's uh, this generating proof is uh, maybe objectively not something very long, but in comparison to uh, what would we expect from transactions, it takes a little bit of time, and uh, it is actually a small block because I didn't want to take too much time for just proving. Uh, so 
in real world, in real flow of ZK Sync, each second minute, we have uh, the big number of uh, new blocks that need to, to be proved. So we need uh, many providers that should prove this uh, this block. And this is a very, a very good place for uh, Golem Network because um, distributing tasks over network is uh, something that uh, the new Golem is doing greatly, great and it is uh, just easy to do. Uh, so as you see, we are almost finished. Let's see what's happening on the CLI. Uh, the, this block was uh, already computed. Oh, so we have uh, the verification. Um, afterwards, we can check what happened on server and requestor. Let's start with requestor. As you see, proof was generated, so it was downloaded from the provider. And this block 60 was published. That means that it was sent to the casing server back. And now let's check what's happened on server. Uh, server received proof for block 60. And here we have log that tells us this, that uh, this block was sent to the Ethereum and it was uh, verified on, uh, on Ethereum blockchain. So it is fully confirmed and that's why our CLI already uh, already uh, returned. Um, so this is it. What I wanted to show you. My goal of this presentation was to show you how easy it is to create application of top of Golem. And for me, it personally, it was just an interesting experiment to do, and uh, it was fun to do. So if you would like to uh, know more how to create uh, applications and maybe uh, if you would like to dive deeper into the code and how to do it, uh, my colleague Kuba Mazurek is uh, doing these workshops on Wednesday, so feel invited. Uh, so now maybe if you have some questions or then I can maybe uh, answer them or Kuba. Uh, yeah, uh, Vitek, thanks for this uh, amazing application and presentation. Uh, I can see we have one question here from Hamzech. Uh, what P2P protocol are you using for, for distributed computing in Golem? Uh, so actually, there are like many protocols involved inside Golem. And uh, I cannot stress this enough. Like new Golem is designed in a very, very modular way. Uh, so for now, we have like a completely decentralized implementation of the marketplace protocol. So the protocols that it's taking care of, of things like demand, offers, proposals, agreements, uh, and things like that. Uh, and we still have like a centralized version of the, of the network protocol underneath. Uh, at the same time, the, the, the payment drivers are implementing ERC-20 and ZK Sync Network, so that's completely decentralized. And coming back to, to the network itself, uh, as I mentioned, Golem architecture is super modular, so it's enough to just uh, replace the, the, the centralized module with the, with the centralized one. And uh, actually, we are planning to uh, to create a, a very generous Gitcoin grant for someone to to create a decentralized version on top of leap 2 p protocol. So uh, if you're interested in that, like please talk to us. Uh, we'd like to know more. <laughs>